So far, we've looked at if-else statements. We've looked at numbers and strings. We've looked at Boolean evaluation. So we've learned quite a lot so far in our study. But uh, one thing that's been true so far is that we've really only seen basic variables. So everything we've seen is pretty simple. You know, var name equals John. So name has John, and sum has some number, and result is false. And even when we've dealt with evaluation, it's just been Boolean values, true or false, and all single values. Uh, that probably won't do for most of what we need for programming. We're going to need some more complex things. Uh, fortunately, we have this concept of arrays. Arrays allow us to create multiple values for a single variable. So the idea behind an array is that we can have multiple things. We can contain multiple independent values. So instead of a single variable, you can create an array and you can use it to store related things or things that should be grouped together. So here you can see I can declare an array just by declaring var first array and then I use the those square brackets they should be next to your P key on your keyboard uh, and I just give it a few values so this first array has four values 12 20 35 and 60 uh, the second array that I have here I'm creating a slightly different way now typically we don't see this away in this way for creating arrays in, in JavaScript or in app script uh, usually we use this first way where we just identify the square brackets and put things into it but you can use the second one new array and then we can put in apples bananas cherries and dates so you can see we're just giving it multiple values. We can access each one of these values with an index. So in arrays, and most things in computer science, when we're dealing with programming, most things start with zero instead of one. And they go up to array.length minus one. So you can see here, var sum, we're gonna get the first value from our first array, the second value from first array, the third value from first array, and the fourth value from first array. Even though it says zero, one, two, and three, we tend to look at this as the first, second, third, and fourth values. But you can see how it starts with zero and it goes all the way up to uh, array.length minus one. So if our array was two, three, four, five, that would be two plus three plus four plus five which would be uh, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4 is 9, plus 5 is 14. So we can use this to, to store multiple values, multiple, uh, multiple related values uh, that we're later going to have to operate on, perform some operations. So we can use array.length to see how many values are in our array. For this array that we created on the last slide where we just used the brackets, we had four values. Array.length is going to give us a value of four. So you can see here, we can even use that dot length to check how long, how long the array is before we actually access its values. Makes it a little bit uh, safer when we deal with trying to find things within our array so that we get exactly what we expect. We can add to arrays. So arrays in, in app script, when you create them, they're not just sta they're not static. They don't just stay there the way they are forever. You can add new values. So here in this first example, you can just throw a new index onto it. So if I create an array var x equals new array, and I use I x dot x zero index, which we haven't actually declared and doesn't exist, but we create it this way, and we use the same thing with x one uh, and set that to twenty two. You can see that if we were to log this, if you were to enter this code in your script editor and run it, you would see that x dot length is two, and then we could access x zero or x one. Um, generally, we don't love this way of adding values to an array, uh, just because you know you could do something like x fifty is equal to some value, and then you'd have all these empty spaces in your array, which would probably mess up things later. So we typically use something like push, or we use unshift, which we'll see in just a moment. But push, we just add a value to the end of the array. So I can create this new array, and then I can push 20, I can push 22, and that adds more values to my array. And you can see here, we're also going to get x length is going to be, tw is going to be 2 in this example. We can remove values from arrays, so you can remove them from the end of the array using the pop method. So in this first example, var x equals new array, I'm going to push 20, I'm going to push 22. Then if I pop, it actually removes that value. So that value popped is going to have the value 22. It's that last thing in the array. And then if I were to look at what my length is, I would see that it is one. I can use the shift method to remove values from the beginning of my array. So I can use pop to take it off of the end, shift will take it off of the beginning. And you can see in this example, we're gonna push 20, push 22. If we shift, we're going to get 20 off of that array instead of 22, and our length is going to be one again. So you can see how this is going to not only give you a value back from the array, but it is also going to remove that value from the array. So this shift and this pop, they both modify the state of my array. We can do a lot of other things with arrays. Uh, we can unshift, which will add values to the beginning. So here I'm going to create an array that has 5, 10, 15, and 20. 
and then I'm going to unshift the value one. So my new array will be one, five, 10, 15, 20. And if I look at what's in position zero, you will see that it is one. If you were to go and enter this code in your script editor and just create a new function and run that function, you would see exactly that my array zero is one and uh, that actually should be my array dot length. It should be five. Uh, you can also reverse the array. So if you have a bunch of values in an array and you want it in reverse order, you can just use this reverse method. So if I create an array and I reverse it, you'll see that it's going to give me values back in reverse order. We can convert an array to a string using toString, and that's kind of interesting, but it might not do exactly what you expect. So if I use var values and I create uh, an array that has w, o, r, d, and s as strings inside of it, and I convert that to a string, it's not going to give me w, o, r, d, s. It's going to give me w, comma, o, comma, r, comma, d, comma, s, comma, or s. Uh, but I can use join, so if I want to just take a bunch of things in an array and put them together in a string, I use this join method, uh, and I can give that something I want to go in between it. So if I use join without any parameter, if I just call values.join and then have parentheses, it's actually going to insert commas in between, just like in toString. Uh, but if I use an underscore, you can see that's going to give me W underscore O underscore R underscore D underscore S. I can use values dot join and then pass in a parameter of just an empty string. Uh, just open quote, open quote, close quote, you know, or just hit two single quotes or two double quotes, one after the other. And that will give me what I want. That will give me W O R D S without anything in between my, my uh, strings. I can also determine if something is an array. So this might be useful if I'm trying to deter if I have a function, for example, and I'm trying to determine if I want to have a single value or I want to have an array of values, if I want to perform some operation on just one thing or on an array of things. So you can see I have this is array function, and that's just going to tell me if the parameter is an array. And you can see down below I have a test instance of. What that will do, I'll create an array, I'll create a string, and I'll create a number. And I'll check to see if array is an array, and that's going to give me true. So value instance of array, when I pass in an array, that is going to give me true. If I pass in a string or a number, it's not going to return true. So this can be useful later when we get into ranges. Now, now that we know about arrays, we can use these ranges to, to perform more complex custom functions. We're going to combine this with loops later, and that's going to be very powerful. We'll be able to do a lot once we know about loops and ranges. So you can see on the left, I have a very, very simple function. It's very similar to the count function you might have already in, uh, in your uh, Google Sheets. Um, how many just is going to return me a range with a, or the range dot length. So if I were to select five cells and pass that into my how many function, I would just get five. And for any ones, I would get, I, this will count the number of ones. Uh, but you can see here there's a problem. So this function any ones will check the first thing in the range. It will check the second thing, the third thing, the fourth thing, and then it just gives up. So we're not checking everything. And you can see the, the code is very repetitive. Uh, if number range zero is equal to one, we're going to return true. And then we're going to check to see if it's big enough. And then we're going to check to see if it's big enough. And there's actually a lot of interesting things to look at here. One is if we weren't checking to see if range dot length was larger than a certain value, we'd actually run into problems because the range might be only one value or two values. So we have to check that. And we also have to convert these to numbers because the things in our range might not come in directly as numbers. So we're going to count the or convert these to numbers using this number uh, function or number uh, object uh, we're, that just basically allows us to take this value and converts it to uh, to a number and we're only going to check a certain number of values because we don't know how to kind of repeat this instruction over and over again uh, but in our next module we're going to get into loops we're going to pair this arrays module with the loops module so that we can see how we can deal with this problem a little bit better but for now, we're going to take a look at a few exercises on arrays, and we're going to see how we can use them within our custom functions and how we can actually do interesting things with them. Thanks for watching.